Mr. Robson, I wanted to interested in because um, the thing that's really, my opinion, really hurting a lot of home builders is the the amount of foreclosures. Uh, I want to just jump in that for one second, and we'll get back to the other thing. Uh, I don't see how someone in our area who is so overbuilt and so hyped, Southwest Florida, Florida, Nevada, different parts of the country, that really things were going up 20% a year. Um, but when you're faced with communities with a lot of foreclosures and you can say a guy has cost of building a house, the land, the dirt in the land, and the sticks and bricks and all, that's uh, 250000 But someone can buy a house down the street or next to it, 175 for a short sale. Uh, you know how you know it, it seems like you've got it we've got to get through that inventory for builders to have an opportunity many of them to get back unless they got someone just got to have a new house I wouldn't go buy a new house if I can buy it for a third less next door uh, how, how big of a problem is that uh, to the home builders in America uh, in certain markets certainly that's that's a problem uh, but you know that's really limited to only about four major markets. Uh, the rest of the country, uh, unfortunately, uh, has that whole mentality uh, spilling over through appraisals and that sort of thing. So uh, I think there's an, um, you can't pinpoint one market and say that's a problem on a national basis. Um, and as I mentioned in my oral uh, statement, there are, uh, even in a South Florida market, uh, uh, opportunities where somebody has owned their own land and have held it for a long time uh, frankly with building materials and that sort of thing the way they are right now it's not a bad time to build yeah uh, if if that is what you were so inclined to do um, certainly there are price ranges and certain types of products that may be more overbuilt than others uh, so you know, it, it's hard to, to do a, a, a broad brush uh, as far as real estate markets are concerned. But absolutely, uh, foreclosures are a problem, uh, whether it's uh, owner-occupied or investor, or whether it's something inventory that builders uh, have been holding. So, You mentioned low appraisals. What were you referring to there? Just the industry, the banks are appraising things, and, and I just wanted to get your I have my own thoughts on that, but just with your thoughts and what you were referring to, that I got the impression you were saying it's hurting the industry, but low appraisals. Well, there, in fact, uh, we had meetings this morning with uh, one of the appraisal groups. Um, you know, what tends to be happening is uh, th there's been a shift uh, primarily to um, the uh, appraisal management companies uh, that tend to be kind of a low dollar uh, appraisal source um, where they are demanding uh, two day turnarounds for appraisals uh, very short time frames uh, a lot of the appraisers that are doing those um, frankly uh, don't know the market uh, they're using short sales and foreclosed properties when there are actually other comparables out there to use. Um, some of the um, code uh, that is being talked about is going to be implemented actually uh, started in May uh, where, uh, not that it says this, but there can't be any collaboration. You can't talk, uh, the lender can't talk to the appraiser and the buyer can't talk to... I mean, in reality, that has to happen. So um, th there's a number of issues and fixes that, that need to be made to appraisals. Uh, and I'll give you an example. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, we have a house. A builder came up to me. He sold the house for uh, $230,000. Uh, same house for a custom. Uh, and in Tulsa, Oklahoma, it's, it's a small enough market that, you know, going a few miles down the street isn't going to be uh, a problem. Uh, and we're actually one of the few markets that actually have uh, price appreciation in homes. Uh, it came in below cost uh, for a construction loan. Uh, that is a problem uh, even in markets that are doing fairly well. So uh, the appraisal issue is a major, major concern. Last uh, question was just, 
arc loans you mentioned, uh, how does that, how, what size should they be? How is that going to help? Will that help home builders? And then, you know, maybe also just, I, I don't know many home builders that have really worked with SBA much in the past. Uh, well, they haven't. Of this. Um, certainly, we have had some uh, of our builders uh, try to access our uh, loan. One, uh, I, I think there's two or three problems with it. If you don't deal with a bank that's already in the program, uh, if, it's, if you're a new customer, uh, you're probably not going to get it. Uh, I think banks that uh, are, are using those programs to help their existing customers. Uh, if, if you're not with a bank currently, uh, trying to get one as a new customer is going to be very, very difficult. Uh, secondly, uh, what we're finding is that uh, on the ARC loans, I mean, a $35,000 limit, uh, you, you've got the same um, back uh, up material, I mean, the same processes and everything else that go into a regular SBA loan uh, for $35,000. So I, I'm not sure how cost effective it is uh, with the ra amount of red tape uh, that you have to go through. Uh, to make it worth somebody's while, unless it's with an existing customer. 